Did you make this huge mistake when you started repairing your credit? Let's get into it, man. I am super excited to talk about this topic. We had a subscriber that asked the question, can you please talk about credit repair myths or credit myths that people believe but are not true? Man, that's my favorite subject. We're gonna make a whole series on this specific subject, credit repair myths and credit myths, okay? This is going to be one of the biggest credit myths that I'm going to bust and I'm going to expose it and tell everyone the absolute truth. The biggest problem we have in my industry is everybody's regurgitating the same information. Unfortunately, it's everywhere. So what generally happens is when you tell a lie enough, it becomes truth, unfortunately, because it, go, it becomes so big that it can't be stopped. So then it just keeps spiraling, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then people actually believe that it works, okay? <laughs> but there's never been proof to actually show that some of these myths actually work. It's just assumptions. It's just conclusions that people have come up with on their own thinking that these processes do truly work, but they've never been able to prove it. But today, I come with proof as I always do because we got to show proof so we can show our followers and our subscribers that this in fact is not true. This is hands down the biggest credit repair myth out there. Should you freeze the third party reporting agencies? Now, a lot of these gurus and newbies out there are just regurgitating information that they got from a Facebook group because they asked the question and someone said, yeah, man, it works but they didn't want to do the research to find out if it truly works. And is it possible for it to even work? That's the real question here. Is it possible for it to work? And listen, I love to debunk these myths because nobody really wants to talk about it. Everybody that's been saying it is now going to come after me and I'm okay with that. So let's cover how an, a dispute letter or your dispute gets processed, okay? Now, here's the big thing to understand. When you send your letter to the credit bureaus, it goes through an automated system, okay? That system is called eOscar. eOscar was created to communicate between the creditors and the credit bureaus or the credit bureaus and the debt collectors, whoever you're trying to actually dispute with, okay? So eOscar processes your letter and creates a Metro 2 code. That code is generated and then it is sent to the creditor or debt collector, okay? Now, Here's the really important part you need to understand. Did you hear me say anything about third parties? No, you didn't. You didn't, you didn't. you didn't hear me say that. Because when your letter goes to the credit bureaus, it's going to the actual credit bureaus, okay? It's not going to these third party companies. So let's just go ahead and throw that off the table so people can really truly understand what you're doing, okay? Again, it goes to the credit bureaus, goes to eOscar, then eOscar communicates to the creditor or debt collector, okay? That's very simple to understand. That is the first stage in the verification. Now, here's the part that people don't get. eOscar is going to create, or sorry, the credit bureau will create an ACDV report. Um, and what that is, it's, it stands for Automated Credit Dispute Verification. So they're gonna stamp it, say this information is verified, then they're gonna send it to eOscar. eOscar is gonna create a code using Metro 2. It's gonna send that code to the creditor or debt collector then the creditor or debt collector has to respond back in a Metro 2 code or respond to you also, or it'll do both, okay? But then they send back the ACDV, okay, the Automated Credit Dispute Verification, saying this is verified or it's not, and then it gets deleted or it gets updated. That's how the system works. There's no third-party reporting that's even touched in this process, unfortunately. So what's really, really important to understand here is there are hundreds, thousands of third-party reporting agencies and the information starts with these smaller agencies and then is sold to the big credit bureaus. So that's why people think that when you freeze it, you're gonna stop the connection. It's already been sold, the information's there. There's, there's what we call an unbroken chain between these third-party reporting agencies and also the credit bureaus. So that connection between the third party and the actual credit bureaus, it's unbroken. You can't do anything, you can't freeze it, you can't stop it even though people wanna believe that, but unfortunately, you cannot stop a process that cannot be stopped. It's designed to not be stopped. And what's even crazier is the fact that they have targeted only four or five of these credit reporting agencies saying that this is gonna make such a high impact on you starting to dispute the, the, the disputing process. You know, SageStream, 
CoreLogic, LexisNexis, and Novus. You freeze all these, and that's going to stop it. They can't verify the information. What about the other 4,000 of those other companies? Why, why would you not want to freeze all of them? Man, you'd spend your whole life trying to freeze all these files. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest mistake. So yeah, it's pointless. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That way you find out every time we drop new content and we break more myths out here, okay? Now listen, I want you to comment in the comment section, drop some emojis. Tell me if you want me to talk about a specific topic because we're gonna, we're gonna cover all those topics that people really wanna hear about. We wanna cover the topics specifically that our subscribers wanna hear about. Because guess what? This is about you, giving you all the information that you need. Okay, and also, if you haven't, hit that bell notification. That way you find out every time I go live or the moment we drop new content, you're gonna be notified immediately, okay? Now, if you're trying to work on your credit, we are, in fact, a full-service credit management company. We created the most advanced do-it-yourself program in the industry. Yeah, that's right, we did. Limitless Culture, Mike the Credit Guy, okay? For 50 bucks a month, we will create your custom Metro 2 attack letters. We will email them to you. You print them, you mail them, it's just that simple. And you're done. You don't have to read any modules. You're not using any template letters. We create custom letters every single round for 50 bucks a month. We also have full service uh, Metro 2 attack programs. We also have full service pre-litigation programs that are designed to sue, okay? And we also have an identity theft program that is also for people that really have identity theft problems or identity was stolen. Okay, this is for legit stuff like that. All right, you can find all of our trusted links in the description, okay? That's where you can always find anything that you need that we're talking about in the videos, or if you're looking for specific uh, things like booking a consultation, link is always going to be in the description. Uh, drop a question, you know, I'll respond with the link if you need it, okay, in the question also. And always remember, last part's the most important, all right, so now we're gonna we're gonna knock out two birds with one stone on this one, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the two biggest ones that they that everyone loves to talk about first, SageStream and LexisNexis. It's the same company, okay? Look, I'm gonna pull it up right here. Uh, this is from SageStream's website. SageStream, part of LexisNexis Risk Solutions. In case a lot of people don't understand what LexisNexis is, it is a database for insurance companies. Yes, they store addresses, okay? That is true, okay? But insurance agencies store all of your crash records, um, your insurance records, like if you've defaulted on insurance companies. Um, it is a massive database of addresses, names, okay? But more importantly, this is one of the number one used sites, LexisNexis, for debt collectors when they're trying to skip trace you. Because guess what? They're gonna find your driving records and they're gonna know exactly where you live based on you know your car insurance. That's how they can find you. So when people say, you're never gonna find me, oh, they're gonna find you, okay? Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't stop there. Nobody ever reads this stuff, but I love reading it, okay? So I'm gonna put it up on the screen right here so you guys can see it. All right, when you request a security freeze, let's read what it says. However, I highlighted it for you just so you could see it, okay? However, a security freeze does not apply to companies or collection agencies acting on behalf of such companies with which you have an existing account that requests information in your credit report for the purpose of reviewing or collecting the account. Wow. They just blew that myth up for everybody that says it's not true. I mean, it's right there, clear as day. Right when you go to try to freeze it, it says that. Everybody bypasses it. Nobody ever reads the fine print. All right, man. It doesn't stop there. So we covered SageStream, okay, and LexisNexis, and with two birds, one stone. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. All right. Um, I got one more coming up. This is going to be the last one, okay, because this video is already getting too long. Innovis. Let's go ahead and put this juicy, juicy stuff up on the screen, okay? So Innovis, security freeze. Oh, wow. It's, it's even highlighted. I highlighted it for you, okay? I'm not going to lie. So, it says it right here. Third parties that still have access to your Innovis credit report when a security freeze is in place include companies that have current accounts or relationships with you. <laughs> what? Okay. Collection agencies acting on behalf of companies that have a current account or existing relationship with you. Credit monitoring companies. State or local agencies including law enforcement or child support agencies. 
federal government agencies as permitted under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So, I hope everybody enjoyed this video because it was actually very simple for me. Um, but I really want you guys to understand that you can't trust everything you hear and see, okay? Um, because as you can see, these were proved to be myths. It doesn't help. You're just extending the process. You're wasting 35 valuable days when you can be directly disputing with the credit bureaus. Now, I'm going to leave you with one serious gem, okay? Since you stuck to the end with me because you always know the last part is the most important. What you can do instead is you can pull your reports from every single one of these companies, okay? If you want to, you don't have to. And you can dispute your names and addresses directly with them, typing up a letter or handwriting a letter, okay? Go down the list, pull your report. You know, my LexisNexis report is like 150 pages long. So it's totally worth it for you to spend the time and correct information that needs to be corrected directly with these agencies. But the problem is, is there's too many of them, okay? So just be aware of that. It doesn't just end with, with these ones. There's thousands of them that you don't even know about. Maybe one day I'll talk about those also, okay? And as always, make sure that you subscribe to increase your credit score.